at Lessons from the Life of Abraham, Genesis 12. I just started Genesis the other day, and I'm really enjoying it. Because we get to Genesis 12, we see Abraham. And in Genesis 12, verse 1, he says, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, God said to Abraham, in Genesis 12, verse 1, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Verse 2 says, And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Verse 4 says, So Abraham departed, as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him, and Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarah, Sarai's wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land of the place of Sichem unto the plain of Moor, and the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there built he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. And when he and he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and Hion on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed going on still toward the south. And there was a famine in the land. And Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land.
Take your Bibles, if you will, to the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis, if you will. You've done been there. If you didn't close your Bibles up, we're still there. Okay, Genesis chapter number uh, 10, if you will, or somewhere around there, uh, within five chapters of it. Uh, Genesis uh, there, if you will, in uh, chapter 12. Uh, Abraham is one of the most well-known uh, men in the Word of God, uh, one of the most used. More people claim uh, that Abraham is their leader in their religions. Uh, so many. Uh, Abraham, you know the story in Genesis uh, 22 there. And uh, Abraham and Isaac, where Isaac uh, was laid down there on the altar. Uh, Abraham's only, uh, it, it's not his only son, but it, his promised son that God had promised uh, to him. The only thing in Abraham's life was the altar. The problems Abraham had was when he got away from the altar. When Abraham was where God wanted him, he was around the altar. And uh, folks, by the way, that's still what we need to do, <laughs> is the altar that we need, where we need to come to him and pray and have that time with the Lord, uh, wherever it might be for you. Uh, tonight, I was going to try to go uh, a, a different direction. We know so many things about Abraham and uh, how God used him throughout uh, the, the centuries of time. But tonight, I want to uh, use Abraham and Bus book in our lives uh, and learn. We can learn from others and save us from a lot of heartaches and trials if we just look uh, to others. And Abraham is one of those. Uh, a while back, I think it was probably in February, that I preached uh, on some lessons that. We can learn from Abraham. And I'm just going to run over those and then just look at some other things. Uh, we find that uh, these are just lessons now. The believer's relationship to the world is never the same after his salvation. Uh, someone gets saved, their relationship to the world will no longer be the same. Uh, two, uh, as believers, we are never to depend upon Egypt. The same there as Michael had read about Abraham or in Woodhouse, not exactly right there. We find in Abraham's life, we find that lying always increases our problems. Lying never decreases our problems. We find that our sin can affect others as well as ourselves. When we sin, it will not only affect my life, but it will affect those around me. We find that you can never substitute God's revealed plan for one of your own. You cannot do what God wants you to do 
using your plan. We find that pure faith is accepting from God those things that we cannot possibly understand. We find that we are to make every attempt that we might see our children, our young folks, married, believers. Uh, we find that we to look to the sweet by and by while living here on earth in the nasty now and now. Just a few lessons that we've learned from Abraham. And uh, tonight, I will simply entitle the message, I guess, Little Sins That Got Abraham in the Big Trouble. Little Sins that got Abraham into big trouble. Uh, I, I, I might be wrong, but I got a sneaky idea. Those that I want to look at in Abraham's life has probably been in most of our lives today. Just little things that we don't think to be very big. Flawlessness not thinking right, not thinking right, selfishness, uh, deceitfulness, faithlessness, four little things. Now, uh, You know, there's a lot of things we would not do if we would stop and think about it. And if we would think them through. You ever say, boy, I wish I could take that back. Boy, I wish I could do that over. Uh, being selfish. Uh, Nobody in here is selfish, I know. Uh, but, you know, they, they tell us you got to look out for number one. You got to take care, number one. We find that that's one thing you got Abraham in trouble. Uh, deceitfulness, not outright lying, but it sure is the kissing cousin of it. Uh, deceitfulness. Uh, if you would. And then the man, Abraham, a man uh, after God's own heart, a man that is known for his faith, and yet we find faithlessness in the life of Abraham. And we just want to look at these for a little while to see. The Father speak to us. Lord, we find Abraham, that man that had such a love for you, man who had such a great faith. And yet, Lord, we realize from Abraham's life that any one of us is liable to fall at any moment, at any time, under any in, under the right circumstances. And we find this in Abraham's life. But Lord, I want us to realize the name. While all believers, all those that are saved, they're not perfect. There will be sin. There will be that in our life that will come between our Lord and ourselves will not break the relationship but will break the fellowship and tonight Lord may we learn from Abraham that we won't have to learn 
these in our own life. But there is that one unsaved one man. Lord, may they realize that you can only be saved by faith. And that is faith in the finished works of God's only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. We've all heard the story. There's a lot of people in hell that heard the story. We must trust him as Savior. Lord, speak to us tonight. And we'll thank you, for it's in your name. We do pray with thanksgiving. Amen. As we look into the Word of God, we find the Bible is a different book. It's a book that there's none other like. Uh, we find in the Bible here, we find uh, the facts about the great heroes of faith, and Abraham was one of them. But we find in a Bible that the Bible does not overlook the sin, even in the lives of some of the greatest uh, humanly uh, in our world. But, you know, the way the Bible shows us, he shows us as we are, but he shows us as we can be. And he shows us as we will be one day. Uh, the Bible doesn't paint pictures that are not true. Uh, a woman one time was had her picture made, went to a photographer, had uh, the picture made. She come back in a week later and she didn't have all the computers and all where you get them as soon as you take them nowadays. But she went back to look at the picture and see which one she wanted. And she looked at the first picture. She looked at the second picture. She looked at the third picture. She looked at the fourth one. And she said to the photographer, Man, none of these pictures do me justice. The photographer looked at her and said, Man, you, you don't want, uh, you, you don't want it. Uh, you don't want justice, you want mercy. <laughs> Christians, we don't want justice. If we get justice, we be in hell. Mm -hmm. We want justice. And tonight, while Abraham was human, Abraham got into a lot of heartaches and trials as a human. But we can learn from him. From Abraham, we learn the faithfulness of God, who in his grace and mercy will rescue his people. I wish that we could say that God's people never did anything wrong. Now, I, I, I seen something by a little preacher down in Houston, I believe, where he was telling the other day about how good Christians are, how perfect Christians are. Uh, I'm glad God is just. Uh, I'm thankful for the mercy of God. You see, Christians will get away from God. But we find from the Word of God that God will bring us back to Him. Now, Christians can sin. But Christians can't get by 
with sin. There is a difference. There is a difference. And we find this in Abraham's life. You remember God had called Abraham out of the river of the Chaldees and by faith we find obedient faith that Abraham left uh, his homeland and he came into the land of Canaan. And by the way, chapter 12 and 13, uh, all through here, space of these and on up into the 20s, you, you can find a lot of things that I'm going to try to say tonight. But Abraham had called, or excuse me, God had called Abraham uh, to leave his people and go into a place where that he would show him. Abraham did that. Abraham obediently left, and finally he came into the land of Canaan. Now, he didn't go by automobile. He, he didn't go by even the Greyhound bus. You don't see those much anymore, do you? Uh, he, he didn't go by taxi. And, uh, what's this one where you call and uh, they come and pick you up? I don't even know. But they didn't go by plane, didn't go by any of these. But you can find Abraham, and I don't know why they rode a mule, a horse. I got a sneaky idea. He did a lot of walk. But however, he finally comes to the land where God told him to go. And in verse chapter 10 of Genesis 12, it says, And when he came to that place, it says, And there was a famine in the land. Abraham went where God told him to go. And when he got there, there was a, a famine. Now that don't sound like a too good a place to be. But there was a famine. There's a difficulty. There going to be some, that it was going to be a hard problem. You see, Abraham had left his homeland. He had those with him. And Abraham was not only responsible for himself, but he was responsible for a lot of people, some that he acquired along the way. Chapter 14, verse 5, And Abraham took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all of their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran, and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. We find uh, all down in chapter 14, that there's something like 318 trained men that had been born into uh, the household of Abraham. Uh, we find the 318 uh, soldiers, and you figure uh, their families, uh, I, I don't know, but there could without a doubt be a thousand people easy. Now you think about it. here Abraham comes to the place where God told him to go. And when he got there, he and all of those with him. And there is a famine in the land. Doesn't have what he needs, doesn't have what he wants. Here are these folks, hundreds of them. They're all now living. In a land they knew nothing about, all unfamiliar. They was among strange people, unknown people, and maybe hostile people. I don't really know that. But then there was the famine that hit that land. It was threatening to wipe out everything. Uh, 
that there was. But now here's the famine. Abraham is where God told him to go. Looks like everything's going to be wiped off. Even Abraham. But my friend, you remember God had made some promises to Abraham. God had made some promises to Abraham. Imagine in his mind, going through his mind, Abraham is wondering did did I really hear the Lord when the Lord spoke to, to me told me to leave my homeland and go to the land and show did, did I really hear the Lord or was it something else uh What's going on in his mind? He's wondering. Has that ever happened to you? <laughs> I've been there. Sometimes you wonder. I'm doing what God wants me to do. But why do why is the family? Why is it that things are happening in my life? Did I really do what the Lord told me to do? Or did I just wonder? Abraham was going through this. He's gone through this in his life. Now, Abraham's experience is a very common one. I want us to notice how Abraham handles the crisis that he's in. Uh, today, I, I, I don't know where each of you are. I, I do know our people. I know a number of our families, a number of our people are right there at that point today. Things going on in our lives that we don't understand. Why? Why is this happening? Anybody? Anybody been there today? I imagine a good many have, but we'd just be honest about it. Abraham had to make some choices. Be careful when you make choices. The choice is yours, the consequences is none. Be careful. Abraham made a choice, he made a mistake. He said, there's a famine here. He said, we, you know, we can't make it. Uh, there's no way we can live. There's no way here in this land. So we're going to get up and leave. Next thing you know, we find Abraham. He's left where God told him to go. And we find him down in Egypt. My friend, his decision to take his household and his people to Egypt. You see, in the Bible, Egypt is always a picture of the world. It's always a picture of the world. Now, Abraham's decision was to take him down to Egypt. Now, I want you to notice a few places where Abraham went wrong. I'm not picking on Abraham, as I said each of us did. Number one, he was thoughtless. 
Now, Abraham, when he's in where God won't hold him to go, and because there's a famine, he can't understand, can't figure it out. So Abraham says, down in Egypt, well, they got plenty of food. They got everything that we need. So come on, let's go. And they went down to Egypt. Now, when a person is saved, becomes a follower of the Lord, things are going to change. Things will change. And it's exciting when you get saved. My. It's exciting. But also, soon, you find the difficulties you begin to face. Boy, you got so thrilled when you got saved. All of a sudden, you tell your family, your family's not too thrilled about it. Your friends, not too thrilled. The folks, be careful. Uh, If Abraham would have thought it through, if he thought of all the results that could have come to pass, what if his people had become so settled there in Egypt that no one would want to move back to the promised land? They got used. What if they get used to the world? You remember Lot's people. Boy, they didn't want to leave Sodom. Got to be careful. Got to be careful. What if what if Abraham had thought about his wife Sarah going down into the world the Bible tells us that Sarah was a very very beautiful woman what if Abraham had thought to what's going to happen to her He just didn't think it all through. You know, God has given us minds that we can think through things. When we make a choice, always consider the consequences of what could be. Think through your decisions before you make them. Thoughtlessness. Now in his thoughtlessness we find that Abraham was selfish. You know, isn't it, isn't it the truth when we so often when we think about things, we first think about self. And we find Abraham doing the same thing. The decisions that Abraham made was very selfish. Now, Abraham knew that his wife would be the object of the men's attention when he got there. Well, I wish I could spend about an hour here. Uh, men, take care of your family, take care of your wife. 
take care of your dog. Families take care of your children. I'll tell you, there's always someone out there. Look and take your dogs right now. They don't care about your daughters. All they're looking is for a selfish night of pleasure. Abraham, that selfish deceit. Here, Sarah was. Now, by the way, ladies, it's not bad to tell your age. Sarah was now 65 years old. 65 years old. And that was only midlife, if you will. Sarah lived to be 120 years old. Abraham, somewhere around the age of 175 years old. As I said, Abraham, Sarah was a beautiful woman. Um, now Abraham taking his wife, his people, going to Egypt. And here is his beautiful wife. What if some powerful man like the leaders and so forth of the land if they wanted Sarah. And there's a real risk that they would. But Abraham said, if they see how beautiful she is, they will take her and kill me. You see, he's looking out for himself. So we find they pretended Abraham and Sarah that Sarah was his sister not his wife. They did that because Abraham figured if it's his sister then his life would be spared. But here Abraham was only thinking of himself not his wife Sarah. What is she going to go through? Others will take her. Take her to be their wives. She will become a part of the strange land. She will become part of the world, if you mind. Forced into a daughter. But Abraham didn't think of any of these things. His thinking was of his own safety, not the well being of his wife. Again, folks, remember, we make decisions. Often we don't think about the consequences. Tonight, just remember this. What we do will affect our family. What we do will affect, what I do will affect my wife. What I do will affect my children. What I do will affect my grandchildren my great-grandchildren and my great-great-grandchildren. You say, preacher, you already got there? No, but I think they're already ordered. <laughs> I mean, if the Lord carried long enough. You see, the Bible goes on to the fourth generation. And what I do and what you do will affect them. No man liveth to himself. Look down the road. Look down the road. Oh, Abraham did not do this. Then we find Abraham was deceitful. Now, Abraham was only telling half the truth, leading Pharaoh to think that she was his sister. By the way, a half lie is really a whole lie. 
There is no such thing as a little white lie. There is none. He was deceived. And while, you know, he, he didn't tell the whole truth. Uh, she was his half-sister. They had the same father, different mothers. We find over Genesis chapter 20. But Abraham was planning to call Sarah his sister in order to deceive people into thinking that she was not his wife and that he was only her brother so they would not kill him if they wanted her. Deception. The stolen this age. God never honors decisions that involve deceit. God doesn't, doesn't bless those kinds of decisions. Then we find that Abraham, the man of faith, here he is faithless. I mean, as great as his faith was, instead of trusting now, when he came to the land God told him, when he came there and he saw the problems of famine, where's that faith that he had when he obeyed the Lord and left? the land of the earth. Where was that faith? Where was that faith at? In, in those situations, what should have Abraham done? Well, I can't stand here and tell you all of it because, uh, and by the way, if we haven't walked in a person's shoes, we better watch what we say. Don't ever say, I'll never do something. Because you just bought a new pair of shoes, you're going to wear it soon. You know, I believe if Abraham would have prayed, Lord, you called me to this land. Lord, now provide. You see, where the Lord guides, he always provides. It may be a land of famine that you remember God's refrigerators never run dry. Paul Shelby, the problem they had was they went out where the refrigerator was and some way the door had come open and everything had come out. That's a problem. We've been there on that a number of times. But you know what? God's storage shed never runs dry. And if God had led Abraham to that place, Abraham could have counted on the Lord taking care of him in that place. Abraham may have prayed, Lord, I can't go to Egypt. Lord, I don't understand. If I go down there, I might lose my wife. I might lose my children. And Lord, you promised that for me, you was going to bring forth a great nation through that promised son you promised Lord, here I am now in a far land. Here I am, the place you called me. Here I am in the land of famine. And Lord, it looks like everything's going to go. I'm going to die. And Lord, I still don't even have that child. 
So Abraham decided to take things in his own hand. You ever done that? Haven't we all? And you know it got him in a lot of trouble. When we try to take care of ourselves, instead of taking care and obeying God. I believe without a shadow of doubt, if Abraham would have stayed there where God sent him, the Lord would have supplied. You remember the children of Israel? They was in a pretty good famine there in the wilderness. But the Lord supplied. Sent down the man. But he become faithless. Abraham, we find acting out of fear instead of faith. He got scared. Every thing, the thoughtlessness, the selfishness, the deceit, were all byproducts of a faithless decision that he made. Romans 14.23 And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So let me throw this at you. Child of God, when you see the famines, don't run. When you see the hard times, that don't mean you're in the wrong place. If that be true, then tear out the book of Daniel. <laughs> tear out most of the Bible. I mean, just because we get saved, that means it's going to be a bed of roses. We find that from Abraham. If you have a decision to make today, don't make that decision on what looks good to you. Make it based upon the word of God. Now here, Abraham has left where God told him to go, disobedient to God, bearing, if you will. We find God rescued his very child. The Lord came to his rescue. Shout out to God. You may get out of God's will, but you're never going to go too far that God's arm can't reach you. God's arm will reach you. And God rescued Abraham. We find in chapter 13, and Abram went up out of Egypt he and his wife and all that he had and lot with him into the south and Abram was very rich in cattle and silver and in gold and he went on his journeys from the south even to Bethel and to the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Hai unto the place of the altar, which he had made there at the first. He went right back where he left. He went right back where he left God. You know, you never been right with God by running away. To get right with God, you're going to have to go back where you left him. He's still there. He won't move. He's still there. Now, I believe, I'm not sure, I didn't check it out today, but if I remember right, this has been somewhere about 19 or 20 years. 
About 19 to 20 years, Abraham had been away from the Lord. Like the prodigal son, he got up and went back. He went right back where God led. You know what? When they go back there, God supplied everything they needed. Don't you think God could have done that 20 years soon? Our God could. What I'm trying to say, the decisions we make, we live with the consequences. How many people have I heard say, preacher, I wish, I wish that I hadn't did what I did. Preacher, I've paid the price. There's many of you in here tonight. Many of us can say, I wish I hadn't done it. Well, that's still milk. You're not going to get it. But I'll tell you what, the more I call the Lord's arms, they're long, they're loving. He loves you. He wants you to come back. And I'll tell you what, when Abraham got back, you know the first thing he did? He rebuilt the altar. That's where God meets you. Child of God, where's your all tonight? Have you been there? Heads of our eyes are closed. Our penis is coming. We're having one verse of them to say. There's a need in your life, you need to come. You don't need to fool around the back. You don't need to try to decide. If, if you left where God wanted you to be what he wanted you to do, you need to get back. You're never going to have the peace of God when you're running away from God. But he'll welcome you back home. As we stand there, the is I'm saying, I'm